going on guys? So I've got here my MP5 SD that was built by TPM Outfitters. Uh, I just received this. It was a little over a year wait. I think it was like a year and five days. So I know on their website it says 22 weeks. But uh, ended up being a little over a year. And I guess that's just because of parts restraint. Uh, they're just having a hard time getting parts. And they've also got you know a lot of guns on order and it's just taken them uh, more time than they originally thought but uh from talking to them they're super nice guys and um you know for those of you out there that are waiting for your gun to get built it will be done at some point so just got to be patient but uh happy to see that it arrived um i have not shot one of these before um i do have another mp5 sd a german one but i haven't shot it yet so this will be my first reaction shooting one of these too, which is pretty cool. But I've got an A3 stock on here. If you guys are at all thinking of getting an A3 stock, they're super cool looking. Um, but they are uncomfortable, they're a little short. And if you don't have uh, like an optic on the top, it, it's kind of uncomfortable to shoot. So an A2 might be a better choice for you if you're going to stick with the iron sights. But uh, pretty freaking cool to uh, have this look. Um, I do have my uh, full auto pack on here so if you are fortunate enough to own one of those obviously it'll work on this uh, platform. So we've got their TPM suppressor on here. Go ahead and take it off. I went ahead and sprayed this down with uh, anti-spatter, uh, the MIG welding spray. So there's that. So this too unfired new. Uh, if you're not familiar with the MP5 SD, essentially this suppressor goes over the barrel and there's little ports in the barrel which I'll show you a picture of. But uh, pretty interesting design. So essentially this takes regular supersonic 115 grain and 124 grain and slows it down from bleeding off pressure in here from the holes to make it a subsonic round when it comes out. So I also brought my uh, SP5 with an Omega 9K can on it. So I'm going to test that out with subsonic ammo to compare it to this to see what they sound like. In a lot of uh, suppressor related videos that I see, um, they kind of do like five rounds of one type ammo, five rounds of another, but they never really say uh, what they're hearing. They're just kind of like, oh, which sounded quieter. I'll tell you what I think uh, from what I'm hearing as I'm shooting it. So. Uh, Without further ado, let's go ahead and shoot this thing for the first time. I loaded up uh, five rounds of 115 grain, that'll be first, and five rounds of 124 grain, just to see if I hear any sort of a difference, and I'll go ahead and let you know if I do. They do not recommend shooting subsonic ammo through these, so I'd highly advise not to do it. But uh, let me go ahead and grab that mag, because this one's empty, and we'll get going. All right, so I've got the 115 grain first, followed by 124 grain. So five rounds of 115, five rounds of 124. I'm not going to talk in between, just so it's just continuous. So maybe the microphone will pick up a difference. Maybe I'll notice the difference. I'm not sure. Really curious to uh, hear what this thing sounds like. Um, I think the quietest thing there is out there. It's probably like a 22 uh, with a suppressor, like with a short barrel. Um, and those are pretty quiet. Yeah, I'll probably do another video on that in the future if you'd like, or maybe even compare it to this. But I uh, kind of have no idea what to expect with this other than I'm assuming it'll sound pretty similar to my SP5 with uh, subsonic ammo. So we'll see. I'm just going to shoot into dirt so that you get the full effect of the sound, but here we go. No ear pro, so. It's actually pretty loud, to be honest. Could just be first round pop. That's actually really loud. Um, huh kind of surprising. I'm going to go ahead and take out the 115 and just do 124 only. All right. So yeah, that was a lot louder than I thought. I actually heard it uh, pretty loud in my left ear. 
So we're gonna go ahead and try the 124 grain. Get that on a little tighter. Maybe I didn't have it tightened down enough. I don't know, it's pretty tight. Interesting. All right, so it's actually a lot louder than I thought it would be. Uh, kind of disappointing, actually. Uh, let me go ahead and grab my SP5, and I'll throw the 124, or uh, sorry, not 124 grain. I'll throw the 150 grain subsonic stuff on that and, and uh, see if you guys can pick up a noticeable difference. But honestly, it's pretty loud to me. Um, louder than I was expecting. So let me go grab the other one. All right, guys, got my SP5, A3 stock, registered SBR. Got my Omega 9K suppressor. It is a tri-lug adapter, so it goes on nice and easy. Really like this setup, short, compact, uh, exactly what I wanted. Uh, specifically bought this for the MP5. I do run it on some of my Glocks from time to time, but uh, this is a nice setup. I, I got this uh, when they first came out, kind of hard to find at the time. Honestly, still kind of hard to find. Very nice, don't really have any complaints with it. Um, you know, other than the safeties being long, it kind of hits your hand right there, your finger. But easy fix, just haven't gotten around to doing it. So like I said, we're gonna be running the 150 grain on this. So I know I'm comparing supersonic through that to subsonic on here, but I mean, it should be similar. But I, to be honest, it's been a while since I've shot this without uh, hearing protection, but I don't remember it being that loud, to be honest, so give this a go, five rounds, see what it sounds like. Okay, interesting. So, the first round was pretty quiet. Uh, definitely quieter than the SD. The second round had a pop like that one did and then I think one other one had a pop and then the rest of them were pretty quiet. So to be honest, you know, and this is something I was curious of because I didn't really see it in any other videos out there. It's just kind of you see people shoot them and you know you hear them through the microphone which you can't really pick up much of the sound difference but in person with no hearing protection on uh, at least for me anyways, it's kind of interesting to know the difference. Um, hmm, pretty disappointing. I know I only put a couple rounds through it. Um, I'm at my buddy's place, so I'm not wanting to shoot a whole lot, uh, you know, piss off the neighbors and stuff. So, yeah, interesting. I, I would still say this is, uh, other than those two pops, this was definitely quieter. Um, it could just be, too, that that's a brand new suppressor and, you know, it needs to get some build up in there to dent in the sound a little bit. That one had a very uh, distinct pop. Um, could be the ammo. Uh, I don't know, it did it with 115 and 124 grain. Um, I'd almost like to run the subsonic through there just out of curiosity, which would be super quiet, but they highly recommend you don't do that. Probably because it slows it down so much that you might get a baffle strike. But um, let me go ahead and switch back to the other gun because it's probably the main reason you clicked on this video. All right, so I apologize. I was planning on uh, doing a few of these mag dumps, but uh, to be honest, it's a lot louder than I thought. I don't want to piss off my friend's neighbors, so uh, probably not going to do that. But yeah, so interesting. Like I said, maybe it just needs to be shot more. Literally, this is the first time shooting it, so it probably needs to get some, you know, carbon buildup inside the suppressor, but it had a very loud pop that I could hear distinctly in my left ear. I'm a righty, so I would think I would hear stuff more in the right side because that's where the uh, opening is, the ejection port there. But yeah, I heard it on the left side. And it was pretty loud, like first round pop, uh, but it was doing it on every round. So interesting, still a very cool gun, very iconic. Uh, you know, a ton of movies that these were in. and. I think, uh, for me anyways, a lot of the uh, firearms that I'm interested in are from like 80s and 90s action movies, and that's kind of what inspired me to, uh, you know, like these types of particular firearms. Uh, everybody's a little different, but 
that's kind of my uh, cup of tea and what I like. But I did bring a 22 uh, pistol with a suppressor, so as I was going to kind of compare those back, because I honestly thought this was going to be a whole lot quieter. But uh, it seems like the SP5 with the Omega 9K is definitely quieter than this with subsonic ammo in that. Um, food for thought, uh, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the 22 pistol with the suppressor on it, run a mag through that. You know, you could hear the difference, but like I said, you can only hear so much through the speaker on the, the camera. Actually, you know, hearing it in person is a different thing. So let me go ahead and grab that and I'll be right back. All right, so here I've got a Taurus TX-22. Uh, it's like a four inch barrel, something like that. And I've got a dead air mask suppressor on here. This thing's very quiet. Now I've just got some uh, cheap uh, round nose Federal. I think it's 40 grain or 38 grain, I don't remember. But um, even with this crappy ammo, because it still has like some pops randomly, when you're running like a, a nicer hollow point ammo through it, it's like just super quiet. So this might be like a smidget louder on some rounds than others just because it's a cheap round. But um, these are super quiet. As far as I'm aware, this is as quiet as you're going to get uh, with a gun and a suppressor. So let's go ahead and empty this mag out. So, didn't lock back, like I said, cheap, kind of underpowered ammo. Some of it's like overpowered, underpowered. Don't really like this ammo a whole lot. Uh, the cool thing about these guns, 16 round magazine. That was either 15 or 16. Um, but, at least on that, because I think one of my mags that I ordered, I think they accidentally gave me a 15 round mag. So, but whatever. But yeah, that's super quiet. I mean, that's like, the thing I could compare it to is... I remember when I was a kid, there was uh, not pellet guns with the little BB, but the ones with that like weird looking cap thing that you had a CO2 cartridge on. That shooting is what this sounds like. So pretty remarkable, um, really quiet. So these are a ton of fun to shoot. And it's something to where if you live on land like this, um, you could shoot something like this all the time and it won't uh, upset your neighbors. So, so I had, <laughs> I've had, uh, some land a few times and I remember on one of them uh, the neighbors used to get really upset when I was shooting so uh, but at that time I didn't have suppressors but um, yeah so let me grab the other one we'll talk about that to uh, finish up this video alright so I was gonna do a side-by-side -side of the SP5 with the suppressor and this one but I don't really think there's a reason to do that just because I can noticeably uh, notice a difference in sound like I said Probably just needs to be shot more and this filled up with more carbon and debris to kind of deaden the sound down, but it had a very distinct pop. And I mean, I have this, I can't turn it anymore. It's wrenched down all the way. Like I said, I put the anti-spatter on all of the uh, internal parts uh, before I shot it. But other than that, as far as the build, um, this is pretty much the cheapest option for an SD uh, as far as I know. The only way to get around a long wait would be to buy one of these either like uh, used or something or somebody that had a new one and, and uh, they're selling it. Or if you have one of the custom builders build one, they might be able to do it uh, in a few months if they have the parts. Uh, but most of the places are around about a year wait. So if you're wanting one of these and you see one pop up for sale like on Gunbroker or something, just snag it up because otherwise you're going to be waiting like a year. It's a really long wait. Uh, <laughs> To be honest, it, it's like the same kind of weight uh, with the uh, Form 4s before they went to the E-Forms, but um, still kind of blows to wait that long. But uh, yeah, other than that, good solid gun. Really tight magwell. Um, I noticed I've had Zeniths, PTRs, the uh, SP5, I have a uh, HK94 that was converted to an SD, and this one's definitely... A very nice magwell. I know on some of the older Zenith, or the not the older Zeniths, but the last run of them before uh, Century Arms started.
taking the MKE guns. I noticed on one of mine it had like a ton of front to back uh, mag wobble to where I had to send the gun back. So um, this one's nice and tight. Fit and finish looks good. Welds look good. I was a welder for professionally for 11 years. Nothing wrong with the welds. Uh, these custom built guns are actually going to have better looking welds than the German guns because you got to remember the German guns are just straight up production. So they're getting them done as quick as they can. And you know the welds show that. Obviously none of these welds are ever going to break. But if you're concerned about the welds, go with a, one of these custom builders like TPM or uh, what's the other one? Dakota Tactical or one of these other guys. Even PTR honestly has, uh, especially on uh, the rear sight, some pretty good looking welds. So they obviously took their time to have good looking welds um, purposely. So, yep, other than that, super iconic, really awesome looking gun. Um, like I said, maybe I just need to shoot it more, but uh, or maybe it's that ammo, who knows. So I could always try out something else. Um, I also, my other one, uh, was built by RDTS, which is another builder out there that's been doing them for a long time. I need to get a can for it, which is why I haven't shot it yet. Uh, and supposedly those are pretty quiet. Uh, probably the quietest ones from what I was looking at on the forums. But uh, yeah, if you're in the market for an MP5 SD, I would definitely take a look at TPM. Um, like I said, they're probably the more affordable option at the moment. And the guys over there are super nice, super friendly. And uh, yeah. So just be expecting a bit of a wait, but honestly, that's going to be at all of them. I think uh, Dakota Tactical is also a year plus wait, but um, yeah, outside of that, pretty happy with it. A little disappointed on what it sounds like, but like I said, I only put a few rounds through it and it could be the ammo or something, but uh, it's expecting it to be quite a bit quieter, but there it is guys. Uh, maybe I'll make another video on uh, something else later, or if you have any suggestions for this video. I really wanted to do a mag dump, but uh, you, know, you know what, I'll just do like a quick burst. Hold on. All right, another thing I didn't mention, uh, on the rails for the A3 stock, like PTR, they're kind of wide, so the stock wobbles up and down. This one's nice and tight, like the German guns I have, so the stock doesn't really move around. I went ahead and threw the a2 stock on here, which is probably what I would recommend if you're just going to run iron sights. It's way more comfortable. And it kind of gets your, your face down on there so you can see the sights better. So I went ahead and stuck this on to uh, go ahead and dump a little ammo with this, but I only loaded up five rounds. So we'll uh, just do the five round dump since it's kind of loud. Um, but yeah, let's give it a go. So, interesting. That didn't seem too bad because it happened so quick, but uh, still has like a distinct uh, pop, poppy noise to it, but still not horrible. Like I asked my buddy, he's probably, I don't know, like a hundred feet away from here, maybe a little further, and uh, he said it sounds super quiet. So, I mean, it could just be that we're right here and I've also got fencing around me, so that could be kind of echoing the noise back to me. But, I mean, for the few rounds I put through it, it ran fine and obviously runs fine in full auto. So, I know it's not a ton of rounds, but, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to get his neighbor super pissed off. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It has, like, zero recoil, to be honest. The uh, MP5 with the Omega can, this is definitely flatter, um, especially with the A2 stock. I mean, those five rounds came out. I, I mean, I was just shooting in the dirt, but I could see the hole it was making. Tiny, you know, spot. So, uh, I think if you had one of these and you did like a red dot on it and you got rid of the rubber grip, which the rubber grip, don't get me wrong, looks awesome. Uh, it's a very iconic, very classic look. Love it, the movie look. But, you know, something else, maybe M-Lock to where you could, uh, you know, if you wanted to put stuff on there. But it just kind of, it makes my hands sweat, to be honest. The rubber, uh, not sure why, but even like at home in the AC, the second I touch this part of the gun, like my hand starts to sweat. So, I don't know, just uh, throwing out some quick observations. But uh, 
Yeah, I think it's pretty sweet and full auto, I'll be honest. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Let's pick one of these up if you're in the market for one. Um, you know, this is definitely like the holy grail of uh, MP5s. So, yeah, pretty sweet. So, appreciate it, guys. Uh, if you'd like to see other videos or have suggestions or, or anything, uh, just go ahead and comment down below and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I generally do car stuff and uh, real estate stuff on here, but if you want to see more stuff like this, I'll do it because this is a big part of my life. Uh, I've been shooting since I was six. And uh, so, yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And you guys have a great weekend because uh, today's Friday. Start of the weekend's tomorrow. And I'll be posting this tonight. So have a good one, guys. Thanks.